Hi guys, this is part one of a video series that shows my formula for writing patent applications as a patent engineer. This formula works for both non-provisional and provisional patent applications. This will be a five part video series, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so that you are updated whenever the videos are released. This is part one, which will be about the background section. Part two will be about labeling the reference characters in the drawings. Part three will be about drafting claims. Part 4 will be about drafting the detailed description, and Part 5 will be about the summary section, description of the figures section, and the abstract. Let's get started with the background section. What am I trying to achieve with the background section? Well, I have three objectives. The first objective is bring the reader up to speed on what they need to know to understand the invention. This could include terms of the art or acronyms, for example. The second objective is introduce problems that exist in the prior art. And the third objective is state why those problems need to be solved. Along with those objectives, I also follow two rules that are kind of like restrictions to protect the patent application. The first rule is never disclose the invention in the background section. This is because the USPTO could consider any language in the background section as prior art, and by putting your invention in the background section, you could be admitting that that part of your invention is prior art. The second rule is never discuss prior art that anticipates or makes your invention obvious. If there is prior art that makes the invention obvious, then I would tell the inventor to go back to the drawing board and reconsider the novelty of the invention or tweak the invention to make it more novel in view of the prior art. This is a no-brainer, especially since the inventor should have already had a prior art search done ahead of time. Before I show you how I write background sections, let's take a look at some common household products first. Okay guys, so I want to share with you a couple of products in my house that I believe have a little bit of innovation that we can uh, write a patent application on. Now, I know these are not necessarily mind-blowing inventions, and they're probably already out there, already patented, obviously they already exist, but I'm selecting them uh, because they're simple enough to write a, a patent application that you guys can understand. And uh, yeah, here we go. So let's look at, let's consider this yellow one as prior art here. Which requires you to manually touch the drinking spout to start drinking and it doesn't even cover the drinking spout so that's exposed so this is not only unhygienic but it's also difficult to use so the problem in the prior art which the invention solves is that it's exposed unhygienic and hard to use Okay guys, so before writing a background section, you need to study the prior art so that you can determine which problems in the prior art are being solved by the invention. Now, this is a water bottle which I believe has enough innovation that I can write a patent application on and show you how to write a background section on it. Now obviously, this invention is already out there, as you can see I'm holding it, so it wouldn't be patentable. However, for the purpose of writing a patent application and showing you guys how I do it, I think it's a good candidate. So the invention has a spring bias cap, which allows the cap to open without any force other than pressing a button. And it also closes and covers the drinking spout, so it's also hygienic. Now I have a second product, which we can write a patent application on. This is a guitar bridge. And the way this works is strings go through these holes down here at the bottom. They come out through the top here and go over these saddles. And typically guitar bridges are fixed to the body. So this thing would not move relative to the body. Now, the problem with that is there's a deficiency in that guitarists would also like to decrease the pitch as well as increase the pitch while they're playing. Typically, without, with, typically with a fixed bridge, 
the guitarist can only bend up and increase the pitch of the note. And they would not be able to decrease the pitch without touching the tuning pegs. So they wouldn't be able to decrease the pitch while they're playing, which is an expressive sound. And everybody probably knows what that sounds like if you hear it. So what this invention does is it actually allows you to modulate the pitch up and down via this bar here. I don't have the springs showing here, but there's typically springs attached to this bridge. And when you press down on the bar, it allows the bridge to move downwards, which would effectively decrease the pitch of the strings. So this invention solves problems in the prior art, which is the inability to decrease the pitch while you're playing. Okay guys, so let me write a background section for, for you, uh, as I would for these uh, example inventions. Uh, the first thing I want to mention is there are formatting requirements at the USPTO, uh, which include margin requirements, uh, font, and size requirements. And so I'll be using uh, size 12 and uh, Times New Roman font. So obviously the first thing we need to do is have a header. So background section, or let's just call it by, it's just background. So the first invention I'm going to be writing the background section for is the water bottle example I previously described. And I will be following the three objectives that I mentioned earlier. So the first objective is to bring the reader up to speed. So let's start with a sentence like this. Reusable bottles are popular because they are more eco-friendly and cheaper than bottled water. Reusable bottles typically have an opening that can be selectively opened and closed by a user. Okay, so let me just uh, proofread this here. Okay. Oops. Okay. Reusable bottles typically have a mouth. I'm going to change this to mouth that can be selectively opened and closed by a user. So here I just demonstrated why reusable bottles are important and useful and the important feature of them that our invention is focused on. There's no need to go into details on things that the invention uh, is not focused on or does not uh, relate to, like the shape of the bottle, the material of the bottle, the size, the volume. See, that stuff does not matter. Uh, typically, I write maybe one or two pages of background, um, but it doesn't hurt to have a short one. It, uh, if if it's applicable, you can have a short background section, but typically I have one or two pages. So the next objective is describe a problem or problems in the prior art that the invention solves. So here I'm going to say, however, existing designs require a user to touch the, the mouth having uh, uh, having mouths or uh, having mouths that or they have they have mouths that are exposed or require uh, screwing motion to expose, to open the mouth. So here's the problem. As I mentioned earlier, you have to touch the mouth. The mouth is exposed uh, and they can require a screwing motion to open the mouth. Now let's talk about why this is a real problem. These requirements make current designs 
unhygienic and inconvenient. So this is the problem to the user. The fact that they're exposed makes them unhygienic and the fact that they require scrolling motion is inconvenient and difficult. So the third objective is to describe that there is a need to solve these problems. So therefore, there exists a need for a water bottle opening that is easier to open and close while being hygienic. Just to be consistent, I'm going to keep this one of mouth. Okay, so that's our uh, solution that we need. Notice how I didn't mention the invention at all. I talked about the prior art and the problems in it and why this needs to be solved. Now, in the background section, you don't need to recite the Encyclopedia Britannica here, guys. Just focus on what's important to the invention. What sets the reader up to understand the invention? If there are acronyms or terms of the art that won't be obvious to the inventor, uh, to the reader, um, when they are reading the application, the background is where you would put that stuff. So that's how I would do it. So that's the first example. And let's go to the second example now. So I'll just do this. This is the first one. Now, when you write, when I write my applications, I do not have this. This is just to show you that there's this is the first example, and this is the second example. So I'll do the guitar bridge. So this one's a bit more complicated, so the reader needs to know a bit more to understand the invention. So let's just start with, what is a guitar bridge? Guitar bridge functions to intonate and, so intonate installed guitar strings and raise the guitar strings relative to the frets the body of the guitar. Now, some of you may not be familiar with this. Um, I am, because I play guitar, and I'm uh, I'm into modding guitars, and you know it's a hobby of mine, so I know about what this is. But as a patent engineer, I have to adapt and learn new uh, subject matter all the time, even in fields that I have not, not I don't know anything about. So. You know, I might get a biotech invention, and I'm you know I have a nanoscience background, but uh, not biotech. So, but I do great with any invention, because theoretically, if the inventor invented something, they have enough knowledge for me to learn from them to explain the invention. So in these instances, you would I, I usually talk to the inventor uh, to get more information. So this is what a guitar bridge typically does, the general goal of it. Now let's talk about bending strings. So bending a guitar string while under tension causes the guitar string to increase in pitch. Bending guitar strings is a well-known technique in various musical styles to add expression to a melody. For example, bending a string can add vibrato to a note. So let me just correct bending here. So bending a guitar string while in tension causes the guitar string to increase in pitch. Bending guitar string, bending guitar strings <laughs> is a well-known technique in various musical styles to add expression to a melody. For example, bending a string can add vibrato to a note. So here I explain, uh, you know, why it's imp why why it's important in guitar playing to increase the tension of a string to create expressiveness. However, now let's talk about problems. Current 
guitar bridge designs are fixed which means that while playing installed guitar strings can only be increased in pitch by way of the user's finger bending the string this limitation does not allow the player to decrease the pitch and also limits the player to bending only a few strings at once using their fretting fingers. Typically, the player, player only has four fingers available to bend strings. So here I say, the problem is that the bridge designs are fixed, which means that while playing, installed guitar strings can only be increased in pitch by way of the user's finger bending the string. This limitation does not allow the player to decrease the pitch and also limits the player to bending only a few strings. What's this? Uh, what was I trying to say here? Uh, Oh, at once, oh, at once, by using their fretting fingers. Typically, the player only has four fingers available to bend strings. So these are the problems that, or limitations. So sometimes it's not necessarily a problem, it's just a limitation. Current bridges are limited, and we're explaining why up here bending strings is really important but they're only allowed to bend it upward or increase the pitch so there's a limitation now let's talk about why this limitation needs to be solved therefore there exists a need for a guitar bridge that allows the player to decrease and increase the pitch of guitar strings while strumming chords or playing single notes allowing the player to change the pitch of an entire chord or a single string upward and downward let me just proofread this therefore there is a need for a guitar bridge that allows the player to decrease and increase the pitch of guitar strings while strumming chords or playing single notes allowing the player to change the pitch now, I typically proofread every sentence or a couple sentences I write. I find this to be much easier than writing the whole thing and then going back through it. It's just how I do it. I like to feel like all the work I've done was solid. I don't like feeling like every, every sentence I write is not good. So, that's the background section for the guitar uh, bridge invention. So, let me just write here. So, example one. Um, now, these are not the way I would write it. Of course, these are just noting the examples to guitar bridge. Yeah, so basically this guitar bridge thing, <coughs> it allows the... There's a need for a guitar bridge that allows the pitch of the strings to be both increased and decreased to add expressiveness as well as be able to add expressiveness to a full chord that's being played rather than requiring the, the player to bend individual strings to achieve that expressiveness. Especially since they only have four fingers typically, and only a few of those are really strong enough to do a good bend uh, to do the expressiveness. All right, let's do, let's just, you know what, I'm gonna do one more, even though I didn't cover it in the video showing the, um, the two inventions that I wanted to uh, write about. Let's do one more. Just for just for a method. See, I, I did uh, a couple of apparatuses here. Uh, let's do a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. 
I mean, we all know that this exists. I'm just doing this for an example to show how I'd write a method uh, background section. So let's start this one with, so what's, what is a sandwich? So sandwich is a popular food which typically includes, oops, I can't see, I'm always typing incorrectly here includes meat, vegetables, and or cheese placed between two slices of bread. Now, by the way, if there's a, if there's a mistake up here somewhere and I didn't catch it, you know, I apologize. I'm sorry about that. But of course, I would proofread everything very thoroughly before I submit it to the patent office. So. A sandwich is a popular food which typically includes meat, vegetables, and or cheese placed between two slices of bread. So that's what a sandwich is. However, current sandwich recipes require improvement. See, it's not necessarily a problem. I mean, it's just more of a limitation like I gave with the second example here. Studies. Now, I'm just making this up, obviously, but this is just for example. Studies show that sandwich eaters have been expressing boredom with existing recipes. Furthermore, sandwiches are typically savory and the sandwich sector does not attract dessert lovers. So yeah, this is our limitation, you know, sandwiches are typically savory. There's no sweet sandwiches, okay? I'm, you know, these are all assumptions just for the example. I know this is ridiculous, but assuming it's novel, this is how I would write a background section for a peanut butter sandwich and jelly sandwich. Therefore, let's, so let's talk about, let's at least make a statement that there's a need for a new sandwich recipe. So the background section, it's, you know, it, it could have a, just a statement saying that there's a need, but that need needs to be supported by the rest of the background section. So not only do you need to uh, set up why there's a problem and why that this, why this need needs to be uh, provided, or why this, sorry, why this problem needs to be solved, but you still need a sentence that says this problem needs to be solved. So therefore, there exists a need for a new sandwich recipe that is exciting and attracts dessert lovers. Okay, so there we go. That is um, my three examples. Uh, I'm not sure which one I will use for the actual patent application with a detailed description and claims and everything. But here we go, we have, we have three examples. We have two apparatuses and one method, which would be a recipe. Okay guys, hope you like that. And we'll go on to the next part of the series.